recording it. Hello. I hope you are doing well. Welcome to the second year anniversary circle of a non-toxic art school on Patreon. So what better way to celebrate than art as ritual? This month, we have been working with the word nourishment. And with each month, we work with a different focus, a different theme, a different word. And as a little sneak peek for those of you um, watching this here now, <laughs> Um, I've been compiling the work from these two years and really honing that work together to um, put together a book, give people a resource that they can use as they choose a little bit more um, disconnected from the internet, you might say. Um, so, nourishment. That has been our theme for this month, as I shared, and I thought nourishment was a really good one for us for this month because we start this month really nourished by the sun and cancer. And I like to think of cancer as the caretaker, the protector. Um, some people see that as a motherly figure or maybe just, we can see it as the moon, right? And then what's so beautiful about this month, the month of July, is that we go from the sign of Cancer, which I see as the moon, to the sign of the sun, which is Leo. And that is our first day. We are in it right now. So with this art ritual, I want to invite you to consider how these two are similar or and how they are different. How do they nourish us, right? So with this art ritual, I also want to kind of bring some reminders to support us. So long and short of it, there are three um, principles to art as ritual that I think are really important to return to again and again. Because when we're using art as ritual, and for some of you, you might not have taken part in this before, um, the first step to creating art as ritual is really just reframing it. Reframing it as ritual to give ourselves permission. And of course, that permission means letting it look the way it looks for you. Reframing it can look like so many different things. You might be into knitting, animation, painting, it doesn't matter. As long as you are kind of honing in on these three principles and coming back to those to kind of check in with yourself, that's what matters most. So first of all, this is art about process, not product or intuitive art. We're moving instinctually, maybe by putting our thinking brain on the back burner and letting things happen intuitively, right? And of course, with that reframe, we see every mark as sacred, even mistakes, um, and that everything that comes up is honored. So when we reframe like this, we're able to kind of shift our focus. And I've shared an image of the labyrinth because it's a beautiful illustration of how the journey ebbs and flows. And I feel with art as ritual or just art in general, our relationship to art and our tools, our practice, whether that is art as a job that you are constantly taking part in or you're just someone getting their feet wet and enjoying the joy that is art, um, that's always changing, that's always shifting, just as we are always shifting and changing. So with this idea of nourishment, 
just a reminder to see ritual as medicine. So art as ritual it is designed, it's here for you to use as medicine. One thing I like to share is this idea that if we look at art through the veil of a spiritual practice, we can see every mark as sacred. When we see every mark as sacred, we can be more forgiving with those marks that surprise us. And so just like any ritual, whether that is a moon ritual or anything else of that nature, it's not about getting things perfect, but rather being authentic to our needs, right? With that lens, we can reframe our experience with art from work, creating a work of art to playing and having something come up in front of us. And seeing that as a form of nourishing our inner child, our creative self, and animal self, again, getting in touch with our subconscious, our instinctual self. And I wanna invite you a little more around the theme of what is nourishing to us to think about what tools we use as ritual that nourish you, that you would like to bring into the magic of what we make today. So for today, I have some incense, some stones, my tarot deck, which I pulled a card. Um, that will be my, my guide for tonight for myself. I have candles lit, incense going, that sort of thing. So kind of start already, begin thinking, what are those tools that you want, right? We'll revisit that again. But of course, another part of ritual, if this is part of your spiritual practice, is when we're getting into that connection, think about what your connection outside of yourself might be. So is that your guide, spirit, or anything that truly feels good to your needs, that feels authentic, right? So we can almost think of this as a way to channel. And if we're channeling something outside of ourselves, Maybe again, we can be a little bit more forgiving and allow the experience to nourish us deeper and deeper as we engage in this practice. So again, let's go back to that, that question, that idea of what nourishes you. Pull out all the stops. <laughs> this is the first day of Leo season. How over the top can you be? <laughs> Are you drinking cacao? Would that be something that you want to include in this ritual? Art supplies. Is there a canvas you've been holding on to but not sure if you want to use? Use them tonight, maybe. Or use some of that paper that you set aside and maybe forgot about. Art materials like pens or pencils or those nice brushes you've been afraid to get dirty. Allow yourself to nourish, right? Nourish and maybe indulgence <laughs> for Leo season, kind of allowing yourself to just have permission to play with those things that just feel good, that that are fun for you. And of course, that's going to look different. Maybe that means just going outside and getting in the dirt and being in nature for this practice. There is no wrong or right way with art as ritual, but there is what serves and doesn't serve us. So as you are kind of taking a moment to select your tools, to select those things that you want to bring in, just kind of think about what feels nourishing for you now. Whatever tools those may be. So if this is your first art as ritual practice. One way I like to start is by starting with writing to get our hands connection down and, and begin just kind of allowing that concept of stream of consciousness coming through. So let's start with some journaling prompts. And of course, 
You don't have to use all of these. You can just use one or you can do all of them right now. We're gonna take some time I'm going to put on some music to allow you to just journey with these. And one thing I want you to focus on is that last prompt. What is my intention tonight? Because that's going to be our seed. That's going to be where we really focus our energy and channel a little deeper. So feel it out first. What do I find nourishing? How? Can I use art to nourish me more? And what is my intention to me? Can we place hands over heart for a second before we dive in? Mm. Just thinking about those questions, take a deep breath in through your nose. Hold it at the top and let it out with a sigh. <sighs> Just allow yourself to be here for a moment. And then let's begin our journey of sense.
All right, my friends. Another minute or two to really reflect on what is coming up for you around these questions. Again, I want to highlight that last one because this is the seed we plant, right? So as we shift our practice, as we shift what we do, let's kind of really focus in on what our intention is for today. Dropping in and connecting with self when you're, when you're ready. Um, take a moment to just do any last bit, connecting with your tools or your space. Um, because again, this is all about nourishment. So creating a nourishing space might be burning herbs. It might be holding a card. It might be getting comfortable because we are going to be doing a meditation. So very quick guided meditation to help invite ourselves into that creative space and really hold time, hold ourselves in this time in just really gentle sweetness. So do what you need to do. Turn off lights, turn on lights, like candles, incense, whatever feels nourishing to you. We're gonna to begin to just kind of drop in, grab those tools that you want to use. For me, a lot of times, my grown I love it. Dropping in. Find yourself in a comfortable position first. Think, what do you need to feel nourished? Do you want to lay down? Do you want to sit up? Maybe meet in child's pose. Whatever works for you. I do want to invite you to place one hand on your heart and one hand on your art supplies. This is to create that sacred bridge. When you feel ready, maybe you can write your intention on your paper in front of you or canvas, whatever all it is, to help plant that seed for real, because again, we're gonna be using them. I'm gonna invite you to move you and say your intention out loud once. Just kind of allow yourself some space to really drop in today. Allow your eyes to slowly close and relax the body. Taking a deep breath in through the nose. Then out through the mouth. And just focus on your intention for a moment first. You begin to notice any tension, pain in the body, just adjust. 
You're here to nourish yourself, to restore using art as a tool of reflection, magic, and wellness. A tool of self-care. Deep breath in, who knows? And when you let it out, let it out, sigh. Feeling your body just sink deeper wherever it is. Coming back to that intention. I'm just allowing yourself to be here. And deep breath in. And out to the moon. Focus on your intention. Allowing the words to just envelop you. Deep breath in through the nose. Let it out. One collective intention we set here today in this space is the intention of being able to be present and allow our creative magic to nourish us. To not leave or stray, but to be bold and feel good doing. Deep breath in through the nose, and out through the mouth. You found your mind wandering and back. And back to your intention. To the body, to the breath. And just be here. Being anchored to that intention, I want you to take one last deep breath in through the nose. And take it all the way up, big, big sigh. Allow oh, your eyes to slowly open when you feel ready. Allow yourself to just kind of unwind. And take your time. If you need more time, take it. Maybe take a moment to look around your space. Feel all the nourishment you just gave yourself by showing up. Nourishment for making the space. Adrienne from Yoga with Adrienne is always saying, showing up is the hardest step and by being here, you've done that. 
So allow yourself to just kind of maybe sit a moment more, a journal of something kind of come up like an aha. Feel the nourishing energy of your space, of your commitment to a creative practice. And just feeling that wash all over you of sunlight or rain or waves within the ocean. Just let it wash over you. When you feel ready, you may start as soon as you feel I'm going to leave these reminders up as we work together. Remember, if my music is not nourishing to you, you can put on anything. Mute this. Just get into your own zone. That is all what it's all about. Your unique flavor, your unique connection, and what you find nourishing. I invite you to once again dive in when you feel ready, and I'll be working with you. Turn off the jams. And get in the flow.
All right, friends, one more song. And then we are going to do a little uh, close up. So as always, keep going if you wish. This is just where we're going to start to wrap things up.
Again, keep looking if you feel called. No reason to step on my behalf. However, as I am at my place to go, I want to leave us with a little closing out reflection, of course. But to you, by Leo. Big hugs. Um, Leo in tarot is the strength card. So if you were not aware of that, you need to work with this energy a little bit more through the tarot. Um, that's one way to do it. So with that said, as I said before, showing up is the hardest part. So thank you for sharing space with me. I hope this ritual can be a practice you can return to in the magic of Leo season again and again and outside of that. How can we nourish ourselves? And one thing I really love about the strength card is it reveals to us the soft power of Leo and kind of taming that boisterous energy and just giving it that soft, like it's like, yes, we're powerful. And Yes, for powerful, but soft. And I think that the strength part is a nourishing reminder of that. In, in the classic depictions we see, because there is a sweetness to it that I think can be seen as us giving our animal self some love, giving ourselves some calm, Energy. I'm so calm. I'm yawning. Um, but with that said, thank you again for taking part in this uh, session with me. More updates soon about some Patreon changes and shifts. Um, but until then, it will be in a little bit more in the future. Um, please take care of yourselves. Take care of each other. And we will talk again soon. Bye-bye.